What's going on everyone? Model Deer Farmer back with you today on the Model Farm Display. We're going to be taking a look at some of the things that I've changed since last video as well as getting working on some new things here today. First off as a whole the bin setup area is like in lots of pieces right now and I will explain some of that uh, as we go on in the video but we are going to start off here with the cattle um cattle yard on the farm here made some adjustments here so we kept the building and the fences and everything like that the same but if you remember the harvester silo used to be over here um over by the bin setup now i was kind of questioning on if i wanted to use this building last time um but I think I've decided that I uh, do want to use it. We ended up putting the harvester silo closer right next to the cattle barn here because then it would feed in and automatically feed out to these little feed troughs here. So we went ahead and did that as I knocked one of the little calves over in which then I knocked a big one over. But we also ended up adding those two um the the small feed ones that were over there as well so i'm really liking the way that the whole cattle area is coming together now it just looks a little bit more active like before with just the building and the fence it kind of i don't know there wasn't much to it and i like it a lot better now i am still going to uh try and get two more pieces to make that a little bit taller um We'll get to that eventually. Now, as I'm over on this side of the display here right now, um, we started working out uh, the ditch here, which uh, if we move the truck here, I pretty much just went along and took, um, took my finger, dug some of it out. I don't remember if I showed any of this in the last video. I don't think I did. I might have in the live, I think I did in a live stream, but we'll show you a little bit more as we go along with that. But um, it looks pretty good for a ditch. I think it kind of makes it look pretty natural and to make things look even more natural. Over on this end, I started, I took a little piece of 150 grit um, sandpaper and just kind of sanded the edges um, just to kind of, this, this foam board works away really easily to sand down and stuff so i kind of just went along it kind of gives it a little bit more of a rounded more natural feel and look there i definitely am going to have to get a little hand vacuum or something to uh clean all this stuff up because when you sand it down it gets everywhere now i only made it this far because i need to figure out where the driveway is going to go and not pull a whole bunch out there um we're probably gonna like make it look like there's a culvert but uh, I, I don't really want to take out where the driveway is going to be. So we'll have to get to that um, once we kind of plan out our gravel areas on the display here, which should be fairly soon. So the sandpaper I'm using, just uh, Gator uh, 150, P150, I, yep, P150. Um, just a little square rectangle that I cut a little corner out of so that works pretty good for that over there now of course with moving those silos over there I thought that this area of the uh grain setup got a little bare so a couple weeks ago at a toy show I picked up this standi model 30 I believe grain bin um and it's looking pretty cool I also picked up one of these uh bin fans by mini truck and tractor um but they are a little bit expensive i have some things i want to change based off of this design so i think i may 3d model my own because i've kind of been um the past week or so week or two maybe uh doing some playing around with some 3d modeling um which is where we get into some of the cooler details that i got going on with this bin right now um looking down here we got a little unload auger now you can buy the can buy ones from mini truck and tractor they look a little bit different um, but they're like three or four bucks per one. Um, and that was like five. And so I kind of want to cut down on some costs here. Uh, cause I would love to like get all these grain bins looking really cool. And that would cost a fair amount of money. So what I went ahead and did was I 
put together a 3D model, just a like round tube thing, um, a little rectangle, and then a rounded top for the motor. And then I glued it on there with testers um, model glue, which seems to work good for everything I've been doing. So that's really nice. It's based off of an eight inch unload auger. And then I also printed out a custom Stormer logo because that's kind of what we're going with here. I know that one bin is MFS, but and this one's West Steel, but I uh we have Stormers on our real farm, and so I kind of want to uh kind of want to go with that theme. Now these other bins I have have some Stormer ones on there. Um very nice looking decals. And then also on the roof here, uh you can also get bin roof vents from mini truck and tractor. Um, but they also cost a little bit of money and I want like six of them around this entire bin. Um, so these were ones I found online, a free 3d file here. Um, and then I don't have a 3d printer myself, but my friend has been helping me out print stuff. Um, he's doing some different stuff for me. He's also working on making me some of the red things, red connectors for that. Um, so he's going to be making some of those for me, 3D printing them. He 3D printed the bin, auger unload, as well as the vent. I am, he's going to be printing me five more for this bin. So we'll have six all the way equally around there and everything and bin unload augers for the rest of the bins here on the setup. And once I design a fan, maybe uh, print some of those too. So here is the bin auger unload that I created 3D modeled myself. Um, so looking pretty cool there. And then this is the bin roof vent uh, that I found online on thangs.com. Um, a big 3D printed printing file site. So they had lots of free stuff on there. So I found this and uh, kind of sized it to what I wanted it. And well, my friend sized it to what I wanted it because I couldn't figure out how to do that. Um, but then he printed it for me and we got one of those so far. So as far as how everything is going to sit here, um, the dry, the, that part, it sits on there, but it's not on there right now. Um, but I also, one thing I forget here, I originally, this had a lot longer kind of auger there, but I cut it down and I put that on there. So then we have... The little piece where the dryer would unload back into the leg so that's looking pretty good still gotta figure out some way to fill the leg but we'll get to that eventually but so how everything's kind of gonna sit here once this bin is done it's probably gonna sit about right here where i kind of have a little bit drawn out this bin sits back there but i was doing some measurements on it and it's got some other stuff i need to do to it yet so it's uh not sitting back there right now this one's missing the top right now because my friend has the top because he's making it so the little connector pieces um, fit in the hole. So he's got that right now. And so everything with the grain setup is just kind of a kind of a mess yet. And I may may or may not be maybe figuring out a 3D model for a hopper bottom wet bin to tie in somehow here. That's still in the worksheet. Not 100% sure on that. We'll have to wait and see. So I went ahead here and grabbed a piece of chalk that I found laying around somewhere. And I decided to draw out our gravel areas. We could probably just use a chalk because if I don't like it, then I can just get rid of it then. Um, compared to the Sharpie. And for the buildings, it's okay because we have, like, it's nice to have precision lines. Whereas this is not as important as I dropped it again. Second time I've done that tonight, but so the house is right here. This is the house that you can kind of see on the edge here. It's going to be kind of like a little walkway up here. Um, so I'm honestly thinking to keep the driveway kind of centered in with this middle area that goes in between the sheds and the grain setup. I want a fairly wide driveway because we're going to be bringing big equipment in and out of here. So I'm thinking if we put the combine right there. And if we kind of go, kind of just, ooh, that's working nicely. Kind of give it a curve right out there. Ooh, you can even see that beautifully on the camera there. I like that. 
Um, I can't. I am left-handed, if none of you knew. And I can't draw a straight line to save my life with my right hand. There. That's a fairly decent, fairly decent line. Um, probably about 30, 35 feet wide or so. So, I mean, a fairly decent sized driveway uh, into the farm here should have plenty of room to turn out and everything. Um, then after that, I kind of want to leave this like a little bit more grassy area in front of the house. Um, but we are going to have the area to drive through here. So I think I'm kind of just going to kind of round that off because I kind of like, I don't like straight lines as much. Kind of like round it off. So I think it just looks better overall. So if we kind of run that back this way, I should probably mark um, over here on our heated shop where my door was going to be. Um, I don't really remember where that was going to be. I got to look on my computer at the sketch that I made that has where the door is going to go. Because a friend is making um, me a shed heated shop. So I had to give him a sketch of how I wanted it built. I'm realizing that I forgot a measurement on the sketch, so it's not gonna make any sense to him because it doesn't make sense to me right now. Whoops. Well, I don't think you started it yet. So I'll update the sketch tonight and send that off to him. But I believe four inches off the edge is where that was gonna sit. And I don't have the Sharpie down here anymore. Well, I guess we are going to be uh, using the piece of chalk here. Took the Sharpie up to do a different project, and now I don't have it down here anymore. And our door is going to be four and a half inches wide on this side, so we'll line that up there. Uh, the door is about going to be right there. So that's about the door on that side of the shop. So for our kind of gravel area here we'll kind of just bring that straight along there kind of and then kind of curve it off probably because i still want to have plenty of area for like a yard which obviously how we have it drawn there's going to be plenty of room for a yard throughout here It'll probably be like a walkway i don't really know yet that's why i like doing it with chalk because i can just literally rub it off with my finger and change something if I want to. But I don't want to change that, so I'm going to draw it back there. So our door is going to be right there on that side. And I kind of just want a nice little, little grassy area off the corner of this shed here. I don't know. This is all going to be a cement pad out front here. Uh, so the grass is probably going to go till there. That little area will be grass. I don't know, I kinda just like that idea. I gotta start moving stuff if we're gonna keep, oh, I hit the auger. Everything is kind of a mess on the display right now, to be honest with you. Just kinda in that stage where uh, everything's a bit of a mess. I was doing some work on my table as well, so that kinda contributed to that. So the edge of the shop is right here, so I'm probably just gonna draw a line straight off that. I'm probably gonna like try to make it look like there's a concrete pad here outside of the main door, cause it's Probably gonna be like a hydraulic lift door or something here. Um, and the idea of this area back here is kind of just like a little uh, area where you can turn around equipment um, out of this shed here and out of the uh, shop. So I kind of just wanna probably just round it off to the door there. And I kind of like that because then the rest of this corner We'll have a little bit of grass separating it, but then the rest of it's gonna kind of be the edge of a field. I don't know what I'm gonna put in the field yet, um, but we'll figure that part out later. Now over here by the seed shed, I don't really think I completely want everything gravel right up to the side of it. So I might just like put a little bit of a line there. I might just, I don't know. See, we can change this as we go if we wanna do something different. It's a great thing about laying out a farm display. If you don't like it the first time, you can just change something. Cause I don't really know what I want to do back here. 
I want to, uh, so this little shed's gonna be a seed shed because we're gonna be kind of like a seed dealer. And so I kind of want hopper bottoms back here. Smooth wall, hopper bottom, mm -hmm. seed bins. Like back in this area. Definitely if we put a hopper bottom bin there, it's gonna kind of make this area a little bit less easy to run equipment through, but I don't really know if that's gonna be absolutely tough. Too bad a deal. And I really messed up on that line there. I don't want it that thick. Maybe about like right there or so. So that's kind of, I think, how I kind of want to lay that area out for right now. Like I said, the area there between the sheds, kind of, I don't know, we'll see yet. But otherwise, everything else in this area of the farmyard, I'm kind of liking how we have all laid out. Now, coming over here by the bin setup is the tough thing. I don't know what to do. I don't know what, like, I, we don't have this fancy of a bin setup. So, like, I don't know if, like, I put concrete around in this stuff or if I just put grass or I don't know what I do. So, yeah, that it's kind of tough. But, uh... For sure, I think I want to make that a little bit shorter. I shouldn't have made it as long in the first place because this is kind of going to come around here, I think. And I feel like we're going to go gravel straight up along the edge of the fence there. Um, I think that's just going to work out best. But then over here by the bin setup is where I don't really know what to do completely. Like... I gotta move this thing here because I wasn't gonna dump a tractor off the table. Like we could come off the edge of that and kind of curve, curve off this way. And I kind of just keep curving around the bin here. Because, because over in this area is kind of gonna be an area where you can uh, wrap around the bin site to run trucks through. So I think we're kind of gonna run that back along here trying to do stuff with my right hand again. That doesn't work. Oh my gosh, that's a horrible line. Let me know if you're a left-handed person down in the comments section. Left-handed struggles, I tell you. There's some things that suck about being left-handed. You're always writing over your stuff too, so then your hand gets all covered in pencil graphite if you're doing that. So that's pretty cool as well. Kind of trying to work here in a little bit odd of an area. But I kind of think the back of this area is kind of just gonna like, if it runs just up to there. Oh, the camera's focusing on the shed there. Come on, focus. There we go. Kind of running off the edge of the shed here up to the grain system. I kind of think that should work out good. I do kind of want to put, like, uh, kind of want grass in between there. So I think I'm going to do that. Because that just seems right. I don't, I think that's the best way to go about that. I guess I can put this back here now because I'm done with the dryer for now. Back over in this quadrant of the farm, I kind of think we just come out of here, have a little bit of a straight area. So if you're coming in on that side, you can line up with the truck. And honestly, with, i move the bin out of the way there. With where we have that set up, I kind of think we want it turned that way a little bit easier to access. Maybe kind of just like round that off there because you're going to want to be able to kind of like swing forage chopper boxes um, around there. I, I, I'm going to try and see if I can 3D design a silage blower too. It's a lot of things. As, as I keep making more 3D stuff, I'll be able to learn how to do more stuff and uh, stuff will start looking really good. And now that I've kind of learned a little bit, I'm kind of going crazy with everything with the 3D printing right now. But uh, it's it's okay. Uh, it's a it's a good time. Now this area in here, on never mind, you can't see that. Hold on. <laughs> Over here, this area, I might put something underneath here to kind of build it up so the dryer's not just sitting in the sky. Yes, you can't really see it for some reason. It shows up really dark on the camera there. Um, but it kind of, it, the dryer is kind of just sitting off the edge there. So I'm probably going to put something there for like concrete off the bottom. I think if we take this right off there and honestly pretty closely wrap it around the bin there and just join it right up there. I think that looks pretty good. Now for over here, 
I think we'll kind of just cut a little bit off there. I'm trying to do right handed again. And then the rest of that, I think we'll just probably all just be rock underneath it. I think overall, that's looking pretty nice. It's kind of what I've had envisioned out for a little while, but I hadn't really done anything fully yet because I didn't really want to put stuff down before I, uh, I didn't want to put stuff in Sharpie before I was really sure on anything. But with the chalk, I can just rub it off if I want to, so... I think that's gonna work out pretty good okay so i'm gonna kind of show you guys here how i did the ditch area here because i want to show you what i'm doing on my farm display and as well as give you guys ideas if you are uh, making your own display um also if you have any ideas for me drop those down in the comment section i'm open to suggestions um and things so yeah so what i pretty much did here is i took this uh, multi-tool that i got here this knife kind of sucks, so we'll see how well it does. Um, but I kind of just took it and kind of just slice along here at kind of an angle, because you kind of want an angle to be able to um, get a little bit more of a UV shape, whatever like that. It's actually cutting pretty nice. Um, but you're gonna do that on both sides without knocking over your camera and they don't have to be straight lines i mean if you got a little bit more weird shaped lines you can't even see that one because of the side we're looking at from but um they don't have to be straight lines they can be curved whatever you want um and then so that'll kind of allow you to a uh, little bit have a little bit easier of a time just Pretty much digging this out with your finger now is what I've been doing. Uh, it doesn't work the absolute best, but it works pretty good. So, uh, and you kind of get the interesting random texture there um, on the bottom, which I think will be pretty awesome. We're probably going to end up putting static grass in the bottom of this, static grass all in here. Um, so that, that should uh, cover it up and look pretty cool. Just keep on pulling stuff out here. I ended up, what I did with all the stuff from the rest of it, I just put it in a bag because you never know when it might come in handy for something. Like, you just might have a random idea of something you want to do with your display. Um, and then you'll have that down the road. I think I kind of went a little narrow in this section, but we widen out further down. So that's just kind of the cool variability you can get throughout here. Um, that'll make it look kind of cool and different. Okay, and there we go. We got the rest of this all the way up to the driveway down here. And I kind of... Where's the camera at? I kind of cut it off nicely. Uh, at a nice edge there. Because we'll probably try figuring something out to throw a culvert in there. Um, we'll figure that out eventually. But then I got all this left over. Um... So I'll probably just set it off to the side now. And I got a bag that I've been storing it in. I'll deal with that later though. So now we're going to come back over here. I got my little piece of sandpaper. And I think I'm just going to gonna work on this right now. So all we got to do is pretty much just take it. Kind of run it across the edge here. A little bit. Until you think it looks good. Which is whenever you think it looks good. Just kind of rounding it off. Making it look natural does make quite a bit of a mess though that is the downside and it actually makes a lot of warmth for your fingers which is kind of crazy the friction is crazy kind of just got to experiment go different ways just whatever works and don't burn your finger You can apply different pressure, uh, kind of do whatever you think here. Okay, we got the handy dandy Craftsman vacuum here and we're gonna kind of clean some of this up and see how it looks. But I don't want to vacuum up my sandpaper. <laughs> A little bit more uh, cleaned up and looking better there. So that's kind of what it's going to look like. Looks uh, really nice. I am liking that. 
it's hard to tell on camera um but it it's looking nice now we just got a lot more to go here there we go that's what our ditch looks like right now after we got it all kind of sound sanded down on the edges i think it looks pretty good the camera doesn't quite do the justice but it looks like a really nice ditch now and i think it'll turn out super nice half done have to go if i end up getting a little bit more into this 3d modeling stuff i kind of would like to try and build something kind of like this to go over to the bigger bin over there as well as probably this bin over here but i don't know how that'll quite work because i think these bins are about the same size like if we take this scoot it over here i mean i could maybe just like run something down from there that'd probably be the simplest for that bin uh, but we'll kind of just have to see going forward because they are pretty close in height this one's just a little bit shorter but we'll see uh kind of depends what i can 3d model here but i think it's looking pretty good another option now kind of looking at how i have things drawn out here i could maybe throw the chicken coop back in this corner so uh maybe we'll do that let me know down in the comment section what you think about that that's pretty much going to be it for today, though. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Kind of getting some more stuff done here with the ditch over there, as you can see. And getting everything marked out for all of our gravel areas. I think the farm display is really starting to come together, and I'm really enjoying it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Also, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. That would mean a lot to me. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, you can leave those down in the comment section below. But I hope you enjoyed today's video, everyone. Thanks for watching. And I will see you all in the next one.